everyone. So sometime last year, I was applying for the student award. One section of the application form was titled Community Service. So I wrote about my work in helping to organize this youth summit that gathers young people passionate about the environment and empowers them to take on environmental projects in their local community. Three days later, after I handed in this application form, I got a call from the organization that coordinates the award. The lady on the line told me that her organization was looking for real community service experiences. I was confused. It wasn't that what I wrote on my application form? So I asked for a clarification and she told me, we are looking for real instances of helping people. Things like tutoring children, building houses, or visiting elderly homes. Have you done any of these things? I realized after this phone call that some people believe charity work means visiting a remote orphanage halfway across the world and handing out brand new stationery. In fact, that was what a few of my friends tried to do. So a few weeks back, um, a few months back actually, some of my friends signed up for the service trip to Nepal to work in a local school. When they came back, I asked them how they went, and um, they told me the most constructive thing they did in Nepal was actually shopping. In their words, it was stimulating the Nepalese economy. Apparently, their seven-day service trip was actually a six-day scenic tour across Nepal, accompanied by half a day of actually visiting a school. So for the first six days of their trip, they dined on buffalo meat and splurged on expensive coffee. On the last day of the trip, when they actually went to visit a local school, they discovered that the school they were sent to was actually frequently visited by volunteers, and as a result, the children in that school were doing quite well, and they didn't need any help. Not all trips end up like this, and sometimes volunteers think they can actually bring on a positive change. A group of boarding school girls went to Tanzania to help build a library. Now, they did their best at putting bricks and cement together. And two weeks later, voila, the children had a new library. Sounds great, right? Well, that's only part of the story. You see, every night after these girls went to bed, the local men would sneak out and they would demolish whatever structure the girls had built during the day because it was about to collapse. They would rebuild it. And in the morning, the girls would get up and believe what was in front of them was actually their work. So what did these people contribute during these two weeks? Not much. They effectively failed a single task they were, there, they were there to do. Sometimes, volunteering doesn't just fail to bring much good. It actually brings more harm than good. Overwhelming international volunteering has spurred whole new industries in certain countries. In Cambodia, the number of volunteering, uh, the number of orphanages increased by 75% over a five-year period. These orphanages are there to cater for the number of tourists who are just so enthusiastically trying to find, a vol uh, to, to find an orphanage to, villi to visit. And the problem is there actually aren't that many orphans in Cambodia to fill these orphanages. So what the operators of these orphanages do is that they go visit parents and lure them to send their own children into an orphanage by promising that they will be better educated, better housed, better fed. A study by Columbia University showed that three out of four children in Cambodian orphanages actually have one or more living parent. And if you think about it, the operators of these orphanages have no incentive to treat these kids well. They are a profit-making firm. And how will tourists donate money to orphanages if they see that these children are living happily? So they manufacture appalling living conditions for these children just to evoke sympathy in tourists. This is not to say that any act of altruism would end up in a disaster, but these experiences invite the question, why? Why does it sometimes go wrong when people simply try to help other people? The problem isn't with the work these people were doing. The work these volunteers and millions across the world are doing was great. 
A lot of you in the audience can probably teach English better than some unqualified teachers in rural China. Libraries, if they are well built, give kids a refuge and a source for knowledge. Orphanages are often short-staffed, and having volunteers to visit, making these, feel children, making these children feel cared for, does do good for them. It wasn't the work that was bad. It wasn't the volunteering that was bad. It was the people being there. Look at me. I am not half a doctor or engineer or teacher or any other profession that would allow me to design and implement long-term sustainable solutions tailored to communities in developing countries. I am a person who isn't really good at teaching English to a kid who doesn't speak any of my languages. I am not very good at singing songs that are four times as old as I am to people in retirement homes. I can't really build a brick wall that doesn't collapse, and neither can I paint the wall of a school neatly. Imagine if you could spend the money you used on that five-day English teaching trip to hire local qualified teachers whose monthly salary is a third of the cost of your trip. These teachers could actually implement structured curriculums that allow um, these students to develop language abilities as opposed to having them learn how to count to 10 again every time a new volunteering group arrives. Imagine if these kind-hearted people used the money they spent to fly to Tanzania to hire experienced local contractors to build that library. They would do it so much faster, safer, better. And, of course, the income of these workers would, as my friend said, stimulate the economy. Imagine if you gave monetary support to organizations that supported struggling families in, in Cambodia who were contemplating whether or not to send their children to an orphanage. The parents of these children could take care of their own kids so much more better than a group of volunteers who only come for three days ever could. People are qualified at different things. I, a 16-year-old girl, I'm good at many things. I can persuade an audience, tell a story, maybe even start a social media sensation. I am insightful about my own community. As a student, I understand how some students in Hong Kong face the problem that, um, of a lack in educational tools. I would see that when they face a schoolwork problem, they wouldn't seek out help from the internet, but they might just give up instead. I also see that whenever I taught these people how a particular online tool could help them clarify a math concept, they would use it the next time they had a problem. These experiences made me realize that the problem with educational inequality isn't that there is a lack of resources, because there are so many of them free and existing and high quality online. It is that there is a lack of awareness and sometimes even the ability to access these resources, which is why I, a, few friend, a few friends and I started this organization called Educlase that helps young people learn about how they can use these free educational resources online. Serving the community and contributing to a better world comes in many forms. There are people who work at the forefront, but there are also people who work behind the scenes. Service doesn't mean that everyone needs to teach a kid English or build a library. Do what you're good at, because that is exactly when you will be able to make the biggest and best impact you can on your community. Thank you.